So hi everyone. Um, like before we start and just start working on our Delaware peach pie, um, I will just do a small introduction. Like last time, who been to the blueberry pie? No one. I okay. watched video. <laughs> okay, you watched video there. Okay. So what was funny? So after that master class, um, we had Fourth of July celebration here on Saturday, and there was one man who was present during the actual cook the first cooking club. He approached me and he said, hey, so you're a chef here. And I was like, um, no. So <clears throat> before we start, I will just introduce myself. I'm Olga Harbovska. I'm outreach and social media manager here working with all of the staff. And the thing that why we are doing this pies is just to show you that America House is like a home, a place where you, where you can come teach, uh, you can learn, you can explore, and you can try some new things. And I would like to introduce Hannah. Hannah will say a couple of words. She's not a chef as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a chef. Um, I am an American student. I'm from the state of Virginia, and I am in college right now. But I'm here in Kiev for the summer, uh, helping out as an intern. Um, so if you see me around, feel free to say hello. Uh, ask me any questions you want, uh, unless you're asking me how to make a pie, because not a chef. <laughs> so um, I'm glad you all could make it tonight. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy this master class of making Delaware peach pie. And what Hannah will be helping with us uh, today is just putting the words, the English words, uh, the vocabulary that we are using. Uh, both um, I'm like learning as well. Um, before each master class, I'm just taking a look at all of the vocabulary. So this is a chance for me to improve, and I would like you to improve as well. So we decided to com like to combine both, like to have for this master class to have like two components. The first one would be for you to see what you can do, what you can cook with uh, having Ukrainian ingredients, especially some like American uh, best pies, probably because we are working with the pies currently. And uh, the second component of this would be for you to improve your vocabulary, to add some words. Well, though this is cooking, but probably who knows where the life will take you. Maybe in the future we will need to have like some vocabulary in your stock of how to cook, how to make, and what to use. Okay? And even in future, like when you go to the website, like any kind of website, you go to YouTube and you decide to check how this or that dish is made, and then you open it and you see some familiar words that you learned during the actual master classes here. Okay? So we'll start. Uh, some of our colleagues coming. And this is Molly. Hello. Hello. Molly. Molly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Molly will be taking a lead on writing the words. Yes, Hannah. Yes. Molly is not going to write the words yes. instead of me. Can you say a couple of words about yeah. yourself? Yes. I'm Molly. I am from Virginia, and I have lived in Ukraine for two years now. And what you do right now? You're an intern. And oh, I'm a summer hire, not an intern, and I um, I go to school at Kiev International School. So Molly, that's our like small team of three. You're working on the cooking club so far, and Molly will be helping with actually writing the words. And Hannah prepared a small presentation yes. about Delaware that we'll go through. Uh, you will hear more about Delaware later as soon as we are done with the actual slide. Okay. So I have the recipe. Um, so I will hand that out now. Yeah, this is more a list of the ingredients. Yeah, yep. The recipe will be here. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's an ingredient list, so you can follow along. Feel free to make notes on it. Mm -hmm. And while this is being handed out, I will start. So the first thing uh, I was really mentioning during our first cooking class, so what we do, we pull back our hair just to make sure that now if your hair will get in any of the components or an actual dish. Yep. And then the next thing that you're supposed to do is just wash your hands before starting working with any kind of food. Split it into two like parts. The first one is the pie crust. Do you know what is pie crust? So what we'll need for the pie crust? For the pie crust, we 
we'll need three cups of um, flour. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. So the next is the salt. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have one teaspoon of salt here. We'll take it for now here. Okay. So uh, the next ingredient is one cup of margarine. What you will see probably when you go to some kind of US websites, you will see that they say like shortening or Crisco or lard. Um, Good enough.
of curry egg and pep. I'll show you the difficulty. So if you try to cut it in half and then to split it into two equal pieces, you won't because it's pretty green. So what you can do, you can just cut in whatever slices you can. Yep. The reason why we are starting with the actual peaches is because you need to get rid of all of the water that is in peaches because if you just do it right before putting uh, all of your peaches, all of this filling into the actual pie crust, it'll, it'll, the pie will come really like watery. And well, well, it's still tasty, but uh, visually, um, it's not as nice as it can be. Yep. So the first thing is just we are working with the filling. So, so here, here we have ten pitches that have been ready sliced. So the next thing that you need to do is to add a little bit of sugar. Then you mix it and you set aside the bowl with the, with the peaches for about like 20 minutes, half an hour for it to start like licking and all of the water will go to the bottom. You just need to mix it well. So we are sending this to vacation. So while your peaches on the vacation, we can start working on the actual pie crust. Mm -hmm. So we have here three cups of flour. So the next thing that you can do, you'll add the salt. And then you add about one tablespoon of sugar. Then you mix it well. Nothing complicated. Then you need to add the butter that you have, the margarine that you're going to use flour mix. It's already flour mix because it has salt and sugar. And you just mix it well. So it turns into a sandy substance and this is similar to what we call, how we call this kind of dough here in Ukraine. Yeah. It's going to be like Ukrainian Pisochny <laughs> So you just need to make sure that um, all of the butter or margarine is mixed with the flour. As soon as this is done, you'll be adding some egg and water. This is actually really all uh, simple and can be really made like really fast. Usually what happens, well not usually but almost all of the time, it's just on weekends my friends are calling me, hey we are really close by, we'll stop by. And then I was like, oh I need to make something. So and then I would just do it really fast and then everyone is happy. That's why probably they stop that often. Yep. And do you know, by the way, why Delaware has the peach pie as an official pie? Yeah. Who knows? Well, actually, in Spanish the Spanish brought the peaches in hmm? the uh, Spanish brought peaches. Uh, yes, peaches they in did, India right? In the 17th yeah. century. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, in the 19th century, uh, Delaware was the probably the only one state that was producing that many peaches. I think it was in 1875 when actually um, Delaware shipped about six million um, baskets of peaches to the market. Can you imagine? 
that's quite a lot. Where they were located, to excuse me, in south or? Um, Is it like how, how how correctly to explain? You probably more aware of the in location. South, in it's center, northeast. Isn't it's in northeast? Yeah. Northeast, yeah. it's by New York. Mm -hmm. oh. Hannah will be telling you about diversity. You yes. should prepare a nice presentation. Mm -hmm. So besides knowing how to make their Pi, you'll know where it is located and some probably interesting facts about that. So we are done with the actual mixture. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now what we do? We add egg. And we'll add for now probably half of the water we have here. It's about half of the cup here. Now we will just mix everything. The good thing about this pie crust is by adding different ingredients, you can make all kinds of pies, even the meat pies. What I do, instead of adding uh, that much sugar, I add more salt and I add a little bit of dill that was previously chopped. And this is perfectly for the like chicken pie as well. So it's really fun and easy and tasty. And actually, what you can also do is just prepare some pie crust and put in freezer. And then whenever you need to use it, you can take it out and freeze it. And then you can you can use it for like any time of the day, any time of the. I think it can stay for about like for two or three weeks in freezer should be fine. Yep, you can freeze it. So now we'll use our hands. It's going to be much easier. And then when you start like mixing it all together, you will feel whether you need to add more water or not. Have you ever made a peach pie before? Mm -hmm. Never tried? <laughs> Just apple, Just yeah. apple, something that is more... Uh, some local fruits, yeah. mostly. Well, we can say that like, peach is something that is local for us as well. I'll put it here, it's going to be easier, and I will show you what it will turn into. So, it's almost done. quite okay. This is what we have for now. Mm -hmm. Then you just need to, but not very, like, do not push too hard. Mm -hmm. um, this high crust likes your hands to be gentle. So, And this is not the kind of dough that you make for like varanike, so you do not need to make it all really smooth and perfect. So basically we are done. So next thing that you would like to do is just to put this, well actually to send this pie crust to another vacation, probably along with the, with the peaches into the fridge, for it to still and cool a little bit for about 20 minutes. Or you can start working with it. It doesn't matter though, when if you put it uh, in a fridge, it will add some, like, in the, as a result, you will have, like, the, the pie crust will be more crusty. Mm -hmm. So, but since we don't have this 20 minutes, we're going to use it. But we are not going to use the entire amount of the pie crust that we made. We're going to use the, probably a little more than half and I'll later explain you why. Okay. So we'll set it aside. Well, for now, it sets like we set it aside for a little bit, and now we it's a time actually for us to take a look how our peaches are doing. So it looks like we have some already water in there. 
So what you need to do, it's better to drain it. Yep. It's good when, if it sits for about like 30 minutes, like more time and more moisture will go away. And what you can see, what you can use the juice for the one that is left after it's been sitting for about like half an hour, um, you can make a jello, or uh, you can add some more sugar and boil the actual juice with the sugar, and it will turn into like a syrup type, and you can add it to the pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are like tons of different things that you can do. there for about a few minutes. Do you have any questions so far? No? Everyone, everyone is so tense. <laughs> Relax. You can ask questions. You can like, offer, you can suggest things. Maybe you know something more. We are open to all these things because we are now professional. In we this are thing. very professional. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> we'll have some people who will probably the next pie, but more professional people making it. So you're invited. Let me just make sure that all of the all of the juice. Is removed. You see, it's dripping. If you keep it for about like, yeah, as I was saying, like for thirty minutes, you will have a lot of juice left. So basically, we are done with the filling, with the getting rid of the juice, but still we need to finish the filling. So, how this can be done? It should be done. We'll put it in a bigger bowl now, so there is no juice inside of the bowl. It's just going to be easier to mix everything. This one is a little bit too small for this, that's why. So you probably remember that here we have about three uh, tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. Then we have two uh, tablespoons of uh, sugar. And then about like half of the teaspoon of the cinnamon. So you add all of this into your mm -hmm. sliced peaches. And mix it well. That's easy as it is. In case you have like your peaches, you will as soon as you probably slice it, you need to try it and see whether it's sour or not. It can be really sweet. It depends what kind of using and whether they are green or they're already the, the right type, the right kind. Um, and then if you taste it and it's like a little bit sweet, what you can do, you can add about one uh, tablespoon of uh, lemon juice. So it won't be that sweet. And this is the mixture, the actual filling that we have. You see, quite easy. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. Uh, nothing that you cannot buy here. Everything can be pro like bought here, so it's easy. Now we'll make our dough, the pie crust. So the bigger part, 
wait, are we going to use for the actual pie crust to put it at the bottom of the uh, pie pan? In order to spread it aside and make it the right size you need for your pan, you need to use the, use the rolling pin, right? And you just it out. Well, usually, probably, <laughs> when you are looking at the uh, all of the cooking master classes on YouTube or any other kind of service, you'll see that um, all the time the actual pie crusts are turning like all evenly round and perfect. Um, well, usually they are already done with the actual pie crust and it is all is edited. So yours probably won't turn into a nice and round and even one, but you shouldn't worry about that because we'll be trimming uh, the edges. Some people like for the pie crust to be really thick. Some people do not like it to be thick. It's up for you to decide what kind of thickness you want to have for your pie. I prefer the thin one, but then I prefer a lot of filling. I think that's fair enough. <laughs> yep. Just with the complications here with the board moving. And uh, will the crust grow up? Um, well, in fact, in fact, what is interesting about this, since we haven't been adding uh, any like baking soda or any baking powder, yeah. it won't. It might even shrink. Mm -hmm. And since it will shrink, you need to make sure that you roll out it well, so then you can adjust it to your pan. And then it won't be like coming from the bottom, and then it won't be filling all of the uh, pie pan. Mm -hmm. It shrinks a little bit. But this is pretty healthy version of the actual dough, so... Uh, well, not that super healthy, but still, it is. So as you can see, we are almost done. And now, so here we have the pan that we're going to use. You see, as you can see here, the actual pie crust is a little bit like, bigger than uh, the actual pan. And this is a good thing. I'll explain you why and show you why. This way. And so what I did previously, I just um, put some butter and then I will add a little bit of flour just to make sure that the pie crust won't stick to the pan. And you can do this. I think like this is all familiar with you, things like that. So now you will be transferring it. For some people it's difficult to transfer it nicely. So there are two types of, uh, like two options how you can do it. You can roll it to the rolling pin and then transfer it. Or the simple one, you just fold it in half and then put it in the middle That's it. And now, the key point that I was talking about is just um, this crust has a tendency of uh, shrinking when it's being baked. 
So you need to make sure that you're not pulling it to the edges, but you're vice versa, you're pulling it and just fitting <coughs> into the actual pipe. So. And this is done. Now we need to get rid of the rims here. How you can do it? You just take your rolling pin. If you have really like sharp edges, it will come off really easily. But if you have the one that I have, they are a little bit like thicker, you can use your knife or um, just using your hands, you just trim it off. Yep. That's also pretty easy. It seems like you're not breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is so quiet. And hungry. And hungry. <laughs> Sasha loves pride. By the way, this is Sasha. Those of you who do not know him, uh, he is our um, innovations and technology uh, coordinator, manager, everything in one. And he's doing an amazing job with all the IT support that we have here, that we need here at the America House. And he's doing our cameraman as well. Well, I really like pies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there is always one like big, huge pie that I make just for him. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. So we are done with the actual pipe cross. The next thing what we'll do, uh, we'll transfer all of the filling inside. This is quite easy. And fun thing to do. some more of the pipe crust, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we can cover it with a solid one. But the other thing is we can use the strips mm -hmm. and can make like a checkers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really easy. Um, a few years ago, I do remember, I was like really struggling of making it. And I was like, how are people making it? It's not coming the way I want. But then I saw one of the master classes on YouTube. I was like, well, that's really easy. So I'm going to show you. So this is the second half of the dough. That's why we, we kept it. So you can use it just to uh, put on the top. But you can also use it to make the strips and do the decoration on the top. We again have the problems with rolling it out. Sasha, maybe you can hold it for a second. Yeah, thank you. Technological upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> now I definitely need to make a pipe for him. I owe you. Put it down. <laughs> it just needs it out you will see that the actual the, the, the pipe cross turns into really nice and smooth it gets really nice smooth texture and this is what we, we need for the actual pie for our peach pie well for any kind of pie that you will be making it I think that's enough sir. thank you It's a little bit difficult to roll it out, but then, yep, it becomes much more easier. Do you have any questions so far? No. Good. 
this might mean two things. Either you understand everything, or you understand nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, I hope that's the first one. Yep. You just need to roll it out, like, to make it really thin, and then to make sure that you'll have ten strips because you will need 10 strips. Well, of course, you, you can use four, but I think 10 would be much better. Oops. So here we go. Now it's all really simple. Well, in case you have the knife, you know, like a round one, like a circle one. Pizza knife. Pasta, yeah, or mm -hmm. for pizza. You can use it. Since we don't have it, we're going to use the, the, the regular one. And you just make the strips. with you start with putting all five on one side you take the smaller one to put to the sides right Now, what is interesting is just for you to make like a nice pattern, you need to fold back the other second. So you yeah. see, so what I'm doing, I'm folding halfway through this one and this one. This means the other second one. I'm putting in the middle of the long one. Yep, like this. Yep, and I'm folding it back. Now, <coughs> I'm folding the other three. One, two, three. The one that you have been touching so far. And I'm putting another strip. Here. And I'm folding it back. Those three that we folded halfway through. Now you take the first two just cut this in half. This is gonna to be too too long for us. The other two, and you put it on the top. See? And you fold it back. So we are done with the half of the pie with a nice pattern. Now we're gonna use, well, we're gonna work on the second half. So it's quite easy. So you take those three, two and three. Just you place it nicely and you fold back the three strips. <coughs> Then you take the first two, like the first two that we've been working with. One, two, and you add the last one. And you fold it back. So now, now you have the pattern. But then what you need to do, you need to hide all of the tiny in some cases, not the tiny tails. You can trim them off, and you can pull them behind the pie crust and press it a little bit hard, harder, and then you will have a nice rim. Mm -hmm. Mm 
You see, this is really easy. It looks really nice in pictures, probably you notice. And, well, actually, you can make it yourself. You can impress someone. Another tip to finish with the pie is what you can do. I've been already mentioning it. For example, if you have left uh, the water, the juice that came off from the peaches, uh, you will boil it with the sugar and then you have syrup. You can pour it on the top. Um, another thing what you can do, you can add a small piece of, of butter in the actual holes here, in these squares, like really tiny one. So it will add some like buttery, like buttery taste a little bit. This is also really tasty. And um, the other option that you can do is just use the egg wash mm -hmm. and just put it on top. Do you know what is egg wash? Yes. 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 Да. You can use the special tool for that. Uh, but the actual like, substance, the mixture that you're using to put it up is called egg wash. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I know it would be very nice uh, to add in egg wash some uh, aroma sugar. It can be, yeah, you can add so some vanilla sugar. Get beautiful aroma. Yeah, aroma. Yeah. You can add some yeah. vanilla sugar, you can add some brown sugar because it will caramelize a little yeah, bit and it will look really nice. Yeah, um, and that's it. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the oven, so you need to preheat your oven to 180, 90 degrees, and then um, you set it inside for about like 30 minutes, but it all depends uh, on your uh, oven, like how good it is. Sometimes it's not getting really hot inside, and well, it, it depends. Yeah, sometimes the doors are not closing, things like that. That's the usual thing that we have in our kitchens, and we need to admit this, yeah, right? Okay, um, so we are done with the actual master class, and now I'm giving the floor to Hannah, and she will tell you more about Delaware, and we'll give some presentation, but for that, yes. I have a presentation. It's through this door into the room right here. There are not chairs in there, so if you want to sit, feel free to bring your chair with you. Um, and the I'll do a presentation on Delaware, on where it is, uh, why it's a state, all of that fun stuff. Um, so if you just follow me into here. While we are setting. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming. Was we'll the uh, sort of quick, informative uh, presentation about Delaware before we get to eat pie. So I know that's what everyone's really looking forward to. So, um, so we're talking about the state of Delaware. And in the word Delaware, the question is, where? So we're going to start out with, where is Delaware? It's located in the northeastern region of the US. You might be able to see it right here, the little red right there. Um, it borders Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Uh, so it's right on the water, which is very exciting for those who live there. Um, and it is the second smallest state in the US. Was anybody at American Trivia on 4th of July? Do they remember what the smallest state in the US is? It's the second smallest. Rhode Island is the first smallest, which you can't even see on this map. So Delaware is a little bit bigger than Rhode Island. Um, and here's a close-up look at what Delaware looks like. And right here, right in the middle, is Dover. And Dover is the capital of Delaware. These are other big towns that have not very many people in them. Um, so this is what Delaware looks like. And I always say, you can always know what Delaware looks like because it looks like a cow's leg upside down. <laughs> if you see it, this is, that's the foot up there. Yeah, so looks like a cow's leg. That's how you can remember Delaware. 
All right, and you also might be wondering, how did Delaware get found? Why is it there? So, uh, Delaware, the name, is from Thomas West, who was the third Baron Delaware. And this De La War, it looks like that, it's actually pronounced Delaware. And um, he was the first one who explored the Delaware River, uh, which is in Delaware. And not only is Delaware named after him, the river is named Delaware River. There's a Delaware Bay. There's a Native American Indian tribe named the Delaware Tribe. So he has lots of things named after him. Um, so he was, he was the first governor in Virginia before Virginia was a state while it was still a colony. Um, and he was very important. He was permanently, for his entire life, he worked in Virginia. So. And, as I said, Delaware is the first U.S. state. It was the first state to sign the new Constitution. Um, and this is the flag right there with the date of when Delaware became a state. So on all of their license plates in Delaware, they say, the first state, Delaware. They're very proud of the fact that they signed the U.S. Constitution first. So, um, and you might be wondering, in a state so small, what is there to do there? Well, let me tell you, there's lots of beaches. That's, that's one thing to do there. Um, they actually have the top rated beaches in the nation. So if you're thinking about visiting a beach, don't forget about Delaware. What climate do you see in Delaware? Uh, during the winters, it's in the, it's in the north, so it gets colder. But in the summers, it's much like here. But also there, they have these few fun things to do. So we will not freeze on the beach? No, you will not freeze on the beach. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a nice beach relaxing day if you go. Um, this is also, it has a beach attached to it, but it's a state park. Um, and it is the most famous state park in Delaware. And it has a lot of fun events throughout the year. They have Halloween festival, Fourth of July festival. They have a kite competition. Do you guys know what a kite is? The things you fly. Yeah, so they have a kite competition where people build kites and then come and fly them. So that's something fun to go to um, at the state park. And actually, uh, it's pronounced Cape Penelope, but originally it was called Cape Delaware. Surprise, because everything in Delaware is basically named Delaware. So. Another awesome site in Delaware is the Winter Tour Museum, which is a, bit, a large house that somebody donated. And inside are artifacts from the United States dating back to the 1600s. And uh, they have all of these artifacts in this house that's now a museum. Um, so you can go in, you can see Native American uh, decorations and all the way up through the 1900s. So it has all American history of arts in this, in this one house. So that's something that's very neat, very educational, and a lot of fun to see. And I included the Delaware State Capitol. Although it doesn't sound very fun to go hang out at where they make legislation, um, this, this is the new Capitol building. But right next to it, they have the old Capitol building. And the old Capitol building is now a museum as well. So you can go there and you can see an, a really old American courthouse. You can go see um, how it used to look uh, way back when, when it was the first courthouse in Delaware. So even though now it's a new, nice new fancy building, um, they still have the old building that's a museum that you can walk through um, and really go see. So. So, today we're eating their state pie. So I thought I would tell you about all of the other things that they also have. They have lots of state pride. They have a state bird, a state fish, a state water animal, a state land animal, state flower, state song, state tree, state rock, state fossil. There's about 50 more on this list that keep going on and keep going on. Uh, they have a state dinosaur, they have a state, it's, it's, it's a lot. They have a lot of things for their state. So um, 
These are just a few of the things. The blue hen uh, is their state bird. Um, and uh, the horseshoe crab. Does anybody know what a horseshoe crab is? It's this right here. Have you ever seen it before? Ever heard of it? It's a, uh, it's a really interesting animal, actually. A lot of, of states have, that have water near them have the horseshoe crab as their state water animal because the horseshoe crab dates back to when the dinosaurs were on Earth. Like, it's, they've been around for a really, really long time. And if you ever see paintings of usually like Native American tribes when they're on the water, uh, you'll see a lot of times if they depict animals in the water, you'll see horseshoe crabs in those pictures. So horseshoe crabs can get anywhere from about that big at, it, at their largest to much smaller. Nowadays, they're usually around this large, um, just because there's not as many of them anymore as they used to be. They are just a hard shell and with legs. Um, they, you can't eat them. Uh, they don't have any meat on them. Um, they, you can pick them up and flip them over and look at them and they have eight legs and in the middle of all of their legs is their mouth. So, so they have all their legs like this and then right in the middle is the mouth. Um, and they just walk along the bottom and if something that is food, they walk on it, they eat it. And yep, yep, so, yep they, they'll, they'll so if you put a piece of food on, you see one of these, um, sometimes they have them in museums where you can touch them and that sort of thing. And um, they'll put, if you put a piece of like uh, fish or something on, on the ground, they'll walk over it and they'll stop and then they'll keep walking. But because their mouth is attached to their legs, they have to walk to eat. So the only way their mouth moves is if their legs are moving. So it's a pretty funny animal. It's a, it's a pretty funny animal. This is very old animal, mm -hmm. I think. Because very it's old. similar to Trilobitas. Mm, it's a very old animal. It's been around for a very long time. You can find uh, documents about it going way, way back when they mention it in writings and that sort of thing. So I thought that that was something fun. And does it have, has, have eyes? It does. It has eight eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like yep. Yes, but the <laughs> they, they're not all in one spot. So they have two eyes that look like eyes, um, not like our eyes, but they they're just <laughs> they're little uh, they're just kind of like little mounds on the top of their head, and they're two eyes. But then they have six more that are around their shell. So they be they have some on the back right here, and then they have some in the front. And then they have one right here in the back, right where their tail is, actually. And um, the two eyes that look more like eyes, they work like they see pictures. But some of the other eyes see uh, a certain eye sees color, a certain eye sees um, just like wavelengths. So they see a lot. Of, so, uh, no, they can see um, they they can see at night. So they have a, two eyes that deal with that. So they're pretty advanced, actually, sort of. <laughs> um, so yes, they have eight eyes, but not quite like a spider. But uh, they can see. So if you touch them, will it bite? Mm -mm. They can't bite you. You can actually put your finger. I used to work at a museum, um, and we had a tank where you could touch these, uh, and you could pick them up, and the guests could touch them and you could put your finger on their mouth and it wouldn't do anything. They can't, they're not strong, um, they just, it's kind of like a, a sponge actually. So um, yeah, they, they're they not harmful in any way. They only eat little tiny pieces of stuff they find. They're a fun animal. I suggest if you ever get to, get to see one of these, definitely do it. <laughs> yeah. So. That's the state marine animal, is the horseshoe crab. All right. And then, just a few famous people from Delaware. As you might expect, Delaware doesn't have too many famous people from it. It's not that large. Um, but we have Stephen Marley. Does anybody know Bob Marley? Yeah. This, this is his son. He was born in Delaware, um, which is kind of funny because you wouldn't expect that. So. Uh, his son is actually from Delaware. Um, right here is Bo Biden. He's the son of Joe Biden, our 
vice president, and he was um, he's in politics, or he was in politics, and uh, he's quite famous throughout the U.S. Just one for being our vice president's son, and two for his own policies that he helped Delaware with. And then uh, this hockey player right here is Mark Eaton, and he's one of the first hockey players from Delaware to actually get signed onto an NFL or er, NFL <laughs> NHL hockey um, team. So he's pretty famous in Delaware, not so much anywhere else. <laughs> so. Um, all right, so that being said, let's eat some Delaware pie. So, <laughs> have you ever been to Delaware State? I have been through it. I have never, I've been to one of the beaches um, and for a day trip. Uh, we, have, we have family that live in New York, so um, we, we, could, we go up through Delaware to get to New York, so we stop one day at a beach. And it's very pretty, uh, very nice weather. It's you know, it's a lot of small town, all the beaches, they have boardwalks and shops and you can buy fun souvenirs and all of that sort of stuff. It's very much beach towns everywhere, so, yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.